Welcome back to the channel. My name's David, and today we're going to be discussing the intake manifold system on the SR20DT blacktop engine. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to I'm going to do a little mini series on the intake manifold system and the cooling system on the SR20 DET engine, uh, specifically the blacktop. That's the one I'm working on, and that was found on the S14s and S15s out of Japan, the Silvias. Now the car behind me, it's a 1995 240SX from Florida. It originally came with the K24 engine, but lucky enough, when I bought it a few months ago, it already had an S15 engine swapped into it. So for the purposes of this video, I've put the stock intake system back onto the engine, um, but it's just loosely fitting right now. I've already removed it because I was test fitting a new NP boosted intake manifold. Uh, I've actually got another video where I kind of review that one and go over a few basics on the stock system. Uh, but for today, I actually, I'm, I'm going to go a bit more in depth onto the system because I know when I first when I first started modifying cars, I, I didn't know what a lot of these things were on the engine, and it took a lot of learning and a lot of experience to finally figure it out. Now, after having done a few of them, you kind of start to figure out what's what. So, for anyone out there who may not know all of the parts that are attached to this intake manifold, how they work, and uh, and where these hoses go, I hope this video helps you out just a little bit. So the first part we're going to start with is the throttle body. It comes right off the front of the intake manifold here. Uh, inside we've got the, the throttle plate. Over here is where the throttle cable would attach and uh, usually there's actually a little bracket here that helps support that throttle cable. You can see it's spring loaded so when you let go, shuts. Uh, right down here, this second spring that you see here, this is actually connected to a little uh, kind of thermostat system that's in there. There's, um, there's a coolant line right here, and then there's another coolant line right here. And when the coolant runs through during a, a cold startup especially, and as it gets hotter, it's going to adjust this, which is going to actually adjust um, how much your throttle body is open. So right here you can see this. It's really hard because, I mean, that thermostat is shut at the moment, but this actually moves up, which opens this up just a little bit and opens up that throttle plate just a little bit to let some air through at idle. Uh, on the right side here, this is actually the throttle position sensor and that's what's sending the signal back to the ECU and telling it where, uh, what position your throttle's at. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take the throttle body off. Um, it's attached by four screws. Now uh, there's one under here, which I don't actually have on at the moment and another one right back there. Um, but I've just got it loosely fitting at the moment. I'm going to take that off and, uh, and move on to the next part of the system. With the throttle body off, it's a little bit easier to see what we're working with here. We've got three hard lines that run underneath the intake manifold. Uh, they're connected to hoses on these two smaller ones. Now, um, I can't remember off the top of my head which one's which, but one of them goes to your blow-off valve, and the other one is going to head over to your boost solenoid that controls the turbocharger. Um, this large one here, it actually goes all the way over to your idle air control valve or idle control valve, whatever you want to call it. So the idle control valve here, that actually is what allows air to bypass the throttle body when you're sitting at idle and, uh, and enter into the intake manifold. It's just, uh, it helps the engine or the ECU to actually control the idle a bit better. Remember on the throttle body, there was one spring that kind of opens up that throttle plate a little bit, but that's not enough to adjust for things like when your AC kicks in or your power steering pump is going a bit harder or the alternators work a bit harder. In that case, you're going to need something else to allow more air into the system. And that's exactly what the idle control valve does. Um, it's a little hard to see. Once I pull this intake manifold off, you'll see this hard line here runs right up into the bottom of the control valve and uh, and it's the solenoid up here that's actually allowing the air to flow into it. So the idle control valve, there are uh, three M6 bolts that, uh, that hold it onto the intake manifold. And uh, you know, let's see if we can get a bit of light in there. You can see just a little bit of the, the spring in there, that's the solenoid. And that's what's allowing the air to bypass into the intake manifold. 
With the idle control valve off, uh, it's a little easier to see here the PCB system that runs down into the bottom of the intake manifold. And the last, uh, the last nipple that comes off of it right here actually runs all the way over to the brake booster. So there is a bracket right here. And if you follow that all the way over, it ends up right at your brake booster. Now, obviously, if you're left-hand drive or right-hand drive, uh, this system is going to just be a little bit different. Um, uh, you know, if you're right-hand drive, well, your brake booster is going to be over here. So we're just going to take those hoses off and I've already, obviously, I've already unbolted this, so it's pretty straightforward. The last, uh, the last thing I forgot to show on it while it was there, this nipple here connects right down to the fuel pressure regulator. So that's that hose right there. So with the intake manifold off, you can now see the fuel rail system. These are side feed injectors. Fuel pressure regulator, and then the hoses that come off. And now I have I have this filter tucked up here right now, um, but the line was just cut from right down there. So there's a little um, there's a little bracket that held this fuel filter down there. But I'm going to be getting rid of this because, well, as you'll see in the upcoming videos, I'm completely changing the fuel system here. Okay, with the fuel rail off. We can get a look now down at, uh, at the last kind of important part of the intake manifold system, and that is the coolant channel that runs from the cylinder head right through here inside and, uh, and exits out underneath. In this coolant system here, we actually have the sensors that, uh, this, this here is the engine coolant temperature sensor, and that's used by the ECU to measure the temperature. And this one is used for the gauge that's on your cluster, instrument panel, whatever you want to call it. Um, this here, this was the return line from the throttle body. And then, like I said, there is one large one right underneath. So we're going to get this intake manifold off and, uh, and take a look from underneath to see how that coolant system works. Now, there's one thing I should note. There are multiple brackets here that were originally installed on the intake manifold system. Uh, they're, they're quite bulky and you know, I'm going to be quite happy to get rid of them as we switch over to an aftermarket system. Um, there's, there's one more bracket down here. It's a little hard to see, uh, but right down there, that black piece, that bracket, it does help support this a bit, but it's also holding some coolant lines underneath. So that one is going to kind of stay in place while we remove this intake manifold. When you go to take off the lower half of the intake manifold, um, the hose that is underneath, and let's try and get that in focus, that big black hose that's right there, you're going to need to take the clamp off of it and you're actually going to, um, you're going to pull that off of the system first before you try and remove the lower half. Now once you have all of the bolts loosened off from the intake manifold, the lower half here, um, and you have that large hose disconnected and all the, all the extra little black brackets that come off of it, once they're all disconnected, it's, uh, it's pretty simple to just pull it right off of the car. Lower half of the intake manifold off now. It's a little easier to see what I was talking about with that coolant passage. So right here, that is fed from right there on the cylinder head. So the coolant flows through the cylinder head, goes into this passage here, travels through, and uh, you measure the temperature for the ECU, temperature here for the gauge on your cluster. Uh, you're gonna feed out to the throttle body, and then this large hose is gonna feed into the rest of the system that was laying underneath the intake manifold. So right under here, this hose here is fed from that intake manifold and it heads on down under here where it uh, splits off. So if you, if you follow it through to there, 
it goes into your um, your heater core inside inside the car so that's what heats up your car the HVAC system and then feeds back out right up through here and feeds back into the water pump system uh, now let's go right back here follow it down the other path right here where it splits this is a bypass that goes right back into the water pump as well and then the last part that you need to know about is this nipple here this is the return line from the throttle body with the rest of the cooling lines off from these here, we can now focus in on the water pump system and, uh, and the lines that run to the radiator. So right here, this here is our thermostat housing. It's held on by uh, three bolts, there's one underneath, and inside is the thermostat that allows flow through here once it gets to a certain temperature. This hose right here, now, like I said, don't have the radiator on the car, but it would run right into the bottom of the radiator. All the coolant comes out right over here from the engine, goes through the water neck. Um, the previous owner had a, a gauge in there. I really don't like splicing this line to do that. There are better ways and cleaner ways to do it. But anyways, all the coolant's coming out of the engine, nice and hot, runs through here, and it goes into the top of the radiator that would sit right there, cools off, and it comes down to the bottom where it feeds back up into this neck here, goes through the thermostat if it's open, and, um, and then the water pump here pushes it back into the engine. So we're going to take that, uh, that thermostat housing off so you can see the inside of it. So the thermostat housing here, it's actually held on by just two bolts. Um, they're M8 bolts. Uh, in this case, I've actually switched over to stainless steel hardware. Um, but for most of you, it's going to be a 12 millimeter head. And uh, it also will not fall off like that for you. I, like I said, I've already been doing some test fitting on this car. And, uh, and so the gasket that would be here is already off. Um, but usually, there's a gasket that seals that so there's no coolant leaks around it. And uh, you're going to have to kind of give it a little, little pry to get it off there. This nipple here, that's that bypass that I was talking about that, uh, that comes off from the, the coolant lines that are running under the intake manifold there. And that feeds in, it's a little hard to see, but the thermostat's in there. And that bypass, what it does is it feeds in right through here and it allows a bit of coolant to continue flowing through. And that's important because that's going to help your thermostat uh, get to the right temperature. So. Three M6 bolts, once again, these are stainless, but you'll typically find, uh, I'm guessing, a 10 millimeter head on there. Take those off and we'll get to the thermostat. So with the bolts off, this just comes off. Now, once again, there's usually a gasket here. It's not that easy. You're gonna to have to pry it off a little bit. And that will expose the thermostat in here. So this thermostat, also is usually sealed in with a bit of a gasket. And, uh, and this is what allows flow when it is hot enough to go right through there. And uh, oh, you can see there is a lot of rust inside there. But anyways, it allows the flow right through and this feeds right here, back into the water pump. So in all honesty, the cooling system on this vehicle isn't, uh, it isn't overly complicated. Now I know on uh, the S13 version, the red top, there are a few differences. I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I believe there is, uh, this is usually where the oil filter would sit, and I believe there's a cooler or a coolant line that runs through into that as well to help cool it off a bit. Um, and there might be a few other, few other differences. Like I said, I'm, uh, don't quote me on it, I, I'm not exactly sure because I haven't worked on one of the S13 engines before. But this is how the system works on the S14 and S15 version of the engine. The only other detail I would add is on the other side here of the engine, uh, where we have the coolant that feeds right out to the top of the radiator. There's also a feed right here that goes down into the turbo. So this is actually uh, the return line from the turbocharger. Got it plugged up right now so nothing drops in, but you can kind of see way down there. 
And, um, and down underneath, you can see this braided line. This one's actually coming off of the engine, and that is the feed for the coolant into the turbocharger. So yes, the coolant also runs into, uh, into that system there. And you can see on this side, there's actually this screw here. It's a little hard to focus in on, but that screw there is a little bleed system on the water neck. And beyond that, it just goes straight into this hose. So that's it. It's, uh, it's really not the most entertaining thing to talk about, and I apologize if it bored you to death. Uh, I'm sorry. But for anyone out there who didn't know how these systems work, I, I hope it really helps you out when you're modifying your car. Um, I know when I, when I first started modifying, it was, it was a little bit intimidating when you didn't know what all of those parts were. Anyways, stick around. The next part of the series, I'm actually going to be completely changing how that system works. The cooling lines, the water neck, all of it is being changed. Uh, I'm switching the intake manifold over to the MP boosted manifold. Uh, and if you haven't already, check out my other video where I, I kind of review it, but I more or less talk about how it fits and and a little bit of the background on how this stock intake manifold works too. So, you know, might be a little repetitive, but either way, check it out. It's going to kind of play into the next video where I dive deep into the modifications on this vehicle. And hey, if, uh, if you like this video or if you found it helpful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. And, uh, and lastly, leave some questions if you have them in the comment section. I'll get back to you with some answers.